So let's actually walk through a little bit more of this. This is a new board for us. And I'm just trying to point out a very simple concept. I've done entire presentations on this. Look at the last 50 years of history. When we've had very high marginal tax rates, we get about 18 and a half, 19% of the economy in in taxes. When we've had very low marginal tax rates, we get about 18 and a half, 19% of the economy in taxes. You see something? The tax receipts actually are sympathetic, excuse me, not sympathetic to the tax rate. They for, sort of fall into this mean. So the concept is grow the economy as much as possible and you actually, as the bigger the economy, that percentage represents more dollars. But when you start to look at this chart, this black line is revenues, the proper term is receipts. And you'll notice if you can run a line, it's always right there about that 18 half, 19 percent. But you see the color lines here? Just this green here, it's just borrowing. And why this is a big deal. Do you remember a moment ago, I was starting to show you that Bloomberg and some of the others, CBO was saying, hey, you probably, you may get as high as seven, seven and a half percent of the entire economy in borrowing. And Bloomberg comes and says, no, it could be as high as 13 percent of the economy in borrowing in at the end of the 10 years. Okay. Let's say CBO's right at seven and your economy is now growing at 1.7, 1.8. The difference between 1.8 and that 7, 7.5, and, and God forbid it's not Bloomberg's 13, that difference is what buries you. And yet we have lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of history of when we've raised taxes, you get a little pop of receipts and then it fades back down because as a percentage of the economy, the economy doesn't grow. So. Let's walk through a couple more things. Interest spending is now a key thing in driving parts of the debt. I'm going to show a couple boards here showing it's spending and interest. It's, and when we say spending, let's be honest, it's mostly health care. One of the things we're not supposed to say out loud, but it is. When you actually, and this is a complex board, we should actually put it up, but here's where we are. And actually, one of the things that's fascinating with this is you're about to see interest in just a couple of years exceed defense. So the interest payment the next year is three quarters of a trillion dollars. A couple of years after that, the interest expenditure for this government will be more than defense. Then you keep looking, a couple of years after that exceeds non-defense discretionary. It'll be more money than that in a couple more years after that. And you start to get into 20 years from now, interest is more than Medicare, and yet Medicare is the primary driver of U.S. debt. And then at a certain point, it starts to exceed 6.5%, 6.7% of the entire economy, of the entire economy, is just the debt payment of the United States. And this isn't conjecture. This is functionally built in. This is this... Um, you know, Committee for a Responsible Budget, their math, and I think their interest calculation is too low, but that's actually the chart we have. So understanding, you're not at the death spiral yet, but you're getting pretty darn close, where healthcare costs go up substantially because we got 67 million baby boomers. And inflation, inflation has made all these bad, ugly predictions that weren't supposed to happen for years move forward, and now because of inflation, you have much higher interest rates, because inflation is the devaluation of the dollar, so you've got to have a higher interest rate. And then the Federal Reserve trying to have higher interest rates to slow the economy down, particularly now wage inflation. Healthcare, inflation, interest rates. If we don't get in front of this, if we don't somehow get productivity up, if we somehow don't get investment capital to actually things that are productive, there's some fa fascinating articles last week about how it's amazing how many factories are being built around the United States with government money. And then the second paragraph is, of course, there's a problem. There's no consumers for the products they're about to make, and there's no workers for them. 
So I'll make you a prediction today, and I'll buy someone a fancy coffee if they remember this a couple years from now. We're going to have a whole bunch of government finance factories, because remember the soft nationalization that happened in the previous couple of years with Democrat control here, and we're going to have factories that basically run at a fraction, a fraction of their capacity, because they can't find labor, and there's functionally no consumers for their product. Remember, right now the world has a glut of computer chips. It was funny, as this place was passing the Chips Act a couple of years ago, that same week or the week after that, The Economist magazine ran a front page or major article that basically said, hey, you do understand the economy is actually a wash in chips. They're just having a supply chain issue problem of delivery. But we believe in a, our, our brothers and sisters on the other side believe in a soft nationalization of major industries, and that's what happened. So let's actually walk through part of the rest of the crisis. And this isn't Republican or Democrat, it's demographics. We got old. We got old. It's not Republican, it's not demographics, it's just the way God made us. But here's what's happening. The Social Security Trust Fund, if you, this, this is from, I think using the number from the Medicare Social Security actuaries, but the CBO Functionally has the trust fund gone in about nine years. Grandma having to take a 25% cut. But within here, so this one is Social Security. But you realize this right here, 2028, the highway trust fund is gone. This one here, the Medicare trust fund. Now remember, Medicare, about 40% of Medicare spend comes from the trust fund. Um, the rest comes right out of the general fund. But that part is, is mostly the hospital portion. And it's gone. It's gone in about eight years. This is our reality. Um, what are we going to do? Are we just going to raise, are we going to raise how much taxes here? Then you're going to, how much taxes are going to do to backshore the Medicare trust fund? Then, of course, the highway trust fund. If you start to stack all these requirements, and then just the baseline deficit. The amount of the economy you'd have to now start collecting in taxes, you almost have to double. And I don't think there's an understanding of how bad the numbers and how fast the numbers are moving away from us. Look, this is just one of my fragility charts. It basically just says, look, if interest rates continue to stay uncomfortably high, there's some models out there, it basically say within the 30-year window, you hit points here where, um, and, and one of the best parts, calcs here, is if you had a 2% increase, and yes, you got to calculate it from this, if you had a 2% of it increase from interest rates that we had a year or two ago, and you held that for the 30 years, at about the 25th year, 100% of all tax receipts just go to interest. That's how, the, there's a concept of fragility, how on the edge we're living, and now we're starting to deal with it when inflation starts to shoot up healthcare costs and interest rates start to shoot up our caring. Did I mention three quarters of a trillion dollars next year in interest, and that's CBO's number, before the recent additional spike in interest rates. 